It is Christmas time. Merry Christmas. We're excited to be with you this morning. Before we worship together, I wanted to remind you of something. We were praying, I was praying about this time. We call this kind of a call to worship and a time to prepare our hearts really quick before we just kind of jump into worshiping together. And I was reminded yesterday and today, um, this season, Advent, different faith traditions call it different things, follow it a little differently, have different traditions, but really the whole direction, the whole lean in of Advent is that we're anticipating that Jesus came to us. Yeah. And sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you know, God's there. You just, you just got to meet God halfway. No. God came the whole way to you, friends. Yeah. God yeah. came to us. He is Emmanuel. And in Psalm chapter 18, Psalm 18, a couple different verses, it talks about God reaching down to us. He picked us up. And in verse 35, it says, he stooped down. It's this, the writer of the Psalm talking to the Lord and saying, you stooped down to make me great. Not because we're so great, but because he esteemed us. He rescued us. He said, you're worth it. He called us family. He rescued us. He stooped down. That is good news, friends. The gospel isn't just something that happened when Jesus showed up in the flesh in the New Testament. The gospel has been unfolding since the beginning of the story. Yep. And as we lean in this morning to worship, that's a reason to celebrate. Our God stooped down to lift us up. He reached down to pick us up. He is our rescuer. And you can stand with us this morning and prepare your heart for worship. Lord, we thank you that you stoop down to make us great, to lift us up, to put us in our rightful place as your children. Thank you, Jesus, that you came the whole way to us. We don't have to try to get ourselves together to meet you halfway. You came the whole way to us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you show us how to receive that this morning as we worship you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, good morning. We get to celebrate today. We know about the good news. We get to share the good news. We get to declare the good news that Jesus is here. Amen.
will declare that you are here.
Hosanna. We hear of this Hosanna. All people shouting Hosanna when he was coming in. And we were talking about it, the team was talking about it this morning. We thought Hosanna was like hallelujah. We thought Hosanna is praise, praise. But Hosanna means save me. Now, you are here. You're my savior. You're saving me. You are redeeming me. Now. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. Church, Hosanna is here. The one who saves. Pastor Amber said he's not meeting us halfway. He is coming down. And he is in our midst today. I just know it. I feel it. The presence of God is here. So today, as we cry out, Hosanna, as we cry out, God, I am desperate for you. You're the only one that can save. You're the only hope that I have. I want you to know that the Lord is here. He is active. He is working. He is listening. This is the God that we serve. So as we sing this song, I just want us to just think about the lyrics think about what we are singing. Because the Lord is here. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle right here is the place where you promise to be I'm not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again won't you meet us your love rise above every fear like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness your glory
this time pass you by. The Spirit of the Lord is here, and He is ready. He's ready to fill you. The Lord is ready to anoint you.
at your feet Oh Jesus Like the deer that pants for water So my soul longs for you Oh my soul longs for you Nothing else matters Nothing else can satisfy Only you Only you Jesus Only you I'm not enough Unless you come Lord, Will you meet me here again Cause all The Lord is in this place. We sense it. We feel it. There's no doubt. The Lord is in this place. His presence is here. And the lyrics uh, in this song, straight from Scripture, remind us that not for a minute, it says, not for a minute will he forsake you. That's the promise of God to each one of us, that I will never leave and I will never forsake you. Not for a minute. Not this minute. Not this morning. If it was difficult getting here, if maybe you were arguing at home or in the car, not that minute. Not for a minute does God ever turn. He is always reaching in a posture. And so those words that also say, will you meet me here again? That's not doubt and it's not questioning God. God is unchanging. He will never leave, he will never forsake you. The words, will you meet me here again, it, for us, our heart posture. It's the daily reminder that without him, without his faithfulness, without his goodness, without his promise, the responsibility on him, he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Will you meet me here again is a daily dying of self, recognizing that without him, I've got nothing. It's heart posture. It's a declaration. It's faith speaking to God. God, will you meet me here again today? Because with you in me, there's nothing that's impossible. Amen. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your presence here. Holy Spirit, come, stay. We desire your presence here. We desire you to have your way among us, God. We desire to sing your praises. Speak to our hearts, embed, bury it in our spirits, your promise that you will never leave, God. And on difficult days, help us to keep our gaze fixed on you and invite you every day. Will you meet us here again? We pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. And they all said amen and amen and amen. Woo! That's good. Thank you all. You can go ahead and be seated. Worship team, thank you so much. That was fantastic and beautiful. Our worship team and tech team are responsible for this stage design. Isn't it awesome? Did you all notice there's ornaments on the tree? I love it. I love it. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome home. I'm Pastor Michelle. I'm so happy to be with you here this Sunday. Those of you watching online, welcome, welcome. Uh, we love to say welcome home. We're super intentional trying to make this place when you come in that you feel welcome, right? That you know that you matter. If you're visiting here with us for the first time, we invite you to complete a, a Connect card. There's a link for those of you that are watching online. Please do that. It allows us to connect with you and get some important information to you. Back side of this card has room for a prayer request, equally, if not more important, right? We want to partner with you in things that are going on. Also for praise reports, you can use that. You can leave these in the box in the back as you go or stop and see us at the Welcome Center. We do have a gift for you, so we would love to say hi after service. I have a couple of quick announcements before Pastor Brandon comes up. One of them is our empty chair service. Uh, that's happening in here on Wednesday, December 15th. Please put that on your calendar and maybe be praying and asking God for boldness, right? When you're out and about in the store, in, in your workplaces, like 
that we would take note, that we would see the things, that our heart would break for the things that break his, and that we would be intentional to invite people. Empty chair service is an hour. It's a beautiful, intimate service in here where we make space and we are intentional for those that are grieving. Holidays are difficult for a lot of people because there's an empty chair at a table, right? And that can be a loss in many different ways. So uh, be a noticer of those around you and be intentional to invite people as well as uh, yourselves on Wednesday, December 15th. Also, we're excited. We said Merry Christmas. Uh, we're having Christmas Eve services, two of them. We're super excited, two o'clock, four o'clock. Get those on your calendar as you're thinking about all the other events you'll do Christmas Eve. We know that it's a priority for you guys to be here. It's a candlelight service, so it's gonna be great. Two o'clock, four o'clock, Christmas Eve. As Pastor Brandon comes up, just quickly, we're still supporting One Hope 27. You guys are so incredibly generous. There are a couple of things that we've already exceeded the limit. Those are books and hair care products. The lists are out there if you wanna take a look at them again and, and uh, maybe steer toward those items that I haven't mentioned. So thank you for your attention, Pastor Brandon. Thank you so much. Uh, it is awesome that we get to be a part of a generous church, right? That, that uh, a couple of weeks ago we talked about a need uh, at a local ministry, and then we have to come back up here later like, all right, this, we have all of these now. Now let's focus over here, which is just incredible. I love, I love being a part of a place that sees a need and realizes that God has blessed us so that we can bless other people. And uh, just, again, so thank you so much for being a part of that. On that same vein, it's so cool for me. I love uh, being able to introduce you as the church to people that, that we partner with through Kingdom Builders. Uh, it's sometimes hard to, to keep track and keep up because you've got so many partners on the other side of the world. Uh, but when they come back and talk, it's so cool because it's like, you're a part of this family. You're a part of what's going on. You're a partner here, uh, and we get to hear an update on that. So uh, we have the Powells with us who are serving in Thailand, and uh, before they come, there's just a quick video that they want to show. So if you would, before they come, uh, just draw your attention to the screens real quick. This is the Powell family, your missionary serving here in Bangkok, Thailand. We want to thank you so much for your continued and very faithful and generous giving to our ministry and support of our family here, especially this past year. Your team has gone above and beyond in giving and blessing our ministry, so thank you. We have been serving in Bangkok and we have been doing lots of ministries here with a university ministry where we're serving at a university of over 525,000 students doing an English club where lots of students are, are coming to learn the gospel message. It's been really incredible. Where Rachel's been working in developing the international worship program. We've also been working very closely with the church going into the red light districts of Bangkok. Rachel actually had a chance to go in and lead worship in a massage parlor. And so we're working with youth prison ministries in Karat, Thailand. We're working with our church very closely and the English programs are doing. Our website's gopalgo.org. You can see all the prayer requests that we have every single month. Again, thank you so much for your faithful commitment and sacrifice each month to missions and for your prayers for our family and missionaries all over the world as well. Way. There we go. My bad. Can we welcome the Powells to the stage real quick? Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to be here. Thank you. Well, we are the Powells, and we are missionaries serving in Thailand. Um, something really exciting for our family this year. We are growing, and we are going to welcome a baby boy in February, so that's really exciting. God is blessing our family, yes. And uh, God has just been doing amazing things through us uh, in, in Thailand and in the Thai church. And uh, if you heard in the video, one of the things that we just want to highlight really quickly is um, we've had the opportunity to do some red light ministry and partner with another ministry there in Bangkok, Thailand. And one of the uh, positive things that has come out of of this COVID season is that uh, many of these uh, red light areas were closed and many were permanently yeah. closed Amen. and that's just a direct result of prayers and yeah. your giving and, and 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 you're praying for us and sending us so thank you so much yeah well son you guys it's such an honor to be back here you guys have been supporting our family financially every single month before we even got to Thailand and you guys continue to do so faithfully while we're here, sharing all over the states and all over Wisconsin uh, as we're back. Uh, we'll be going back a year from when the baby's born. So we just started our journey back here. We just got settled back up in Green Bay. And so we're going to be here, and we're enjoying the snow. <laughs> Ooh, 
it's the snow in Thailand. It's really cold here. We're getting used to it. Our youngest daughter was like, what's that? She forgot what snow looked like. And we're like, it's okay. It's not going to ruin your stuff outside. Uh, which, it, we've been so blessed to be, to be back here with you guys. We think about you guys often, honestly. And you guys are on our prayer wall. We pray for you frequently. And we want to thank you so much for praying for us as well. You're seeing a few pictures uh, on the screen here. If you want to see more pictures and more videos, you can go to our website. Uh, GoPalGo.org is our last name, Pal. Kind of like Go Pat Go. Kind of did that because we're in Wisconsin. GoPalGo.org. And uh, also on our Facebook, it's GoPalGo, as well as all of our social media stuff. And, um, but actually, right here is our pastor that we're working with. And um, he helped, uh, he actually launched the Light Church. We got to partner with him December 26th of last year. So they're coming up on a year. We wish we could be there to celebrate a year with them. But they are thriving, even in the midst of another, um, you know, the, the pandemic and all the other stuff that's happening. In the middle of the pandemic, they planted a church. It is growing. It is reaching uh, the community in a Amazing ways. One of those ways is in, this is one of the youth prisons, one of two youth prisons that we went to um, in this region of Thailand. And this, this church is in what is called the gateway. It's the gateway city to the part of Thailand that has over a third of the population living there. And we get to be there um, where we go back um, for our four-year term uh, over a year. We are going to be partnering with, with this pastor and with the 10 other uh, leaders that he has is uh, leading through the Bible, and he is actually, they're working to become pastors themselves. We believe that God is going to use them and also obviously use us as well to help them plant more churches. Uh, we love being able to see what this pastor is doing, especially, you know, in the, in the youth prisons, but also in the, in the classrooms and the, in the schools that we get to go in as well. And it's incredible because this family, this church family invites uh, these students to come, and the pastor says at the end of every kind of message that we give, he's like, hey, if you guys, whenever you get out of, of, of uh, prison here, and their age is 10 to 20, uh, whenever you get out of prison, just come and join us. If you don't have anywhere else to go, we'll take you in. We'll, we'll be your family. And I've already got to drive two of these students uh, from their home all the way into it, because we're like, hey, you call. You said we could call, and it was so cool to be able to see the, the pastor to be able to give it a warm embrace and all the staff. And they were just like, wow, we feel like family. It was just so incredible, guys. And you guys get to be a part of that through us. And obviously, we would love to invite you uh, to join us as well in person. Uh, we are going to be the only missionaries as a part of our organization in this region. We need a lot more people, millions and millions of people who have never heard the gospel, have never spoken to another Christian, and never will unless someone goes. Will you go with us? Will you be willing to join our team? If you want to know more, uh, you can see us at our table, check out our website. You can also grab a prayer card. Thank you guys so much. You are all incredible. Thank you on behalf of all the missionaries for giving the kingdom builders. You are literally changing lives every day in your city, but also around the world. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Pastor. So good. Hey, before you bail on me, I, I do want to say this. Um, I love the ask that he just had. And sometimes it's weird when like someone else comes into your church and they're like, hey, come with me instead. Um, hear me. Like, hear, I, I want you to hear the heart of, of this place. Um, I believe that this is a place that sends their best. Yeah. That, that we raise people up. That we, we say around here frequently, we don't exist to gather, we gather to go. And while, while they're, they have a table, and, and I hope all of us swing by and grab a prayer card, no matter whether you feel called to go or not, to, to grab, grab a card and pray. But I do believe that there are, there are people in this room that God is, is moving on their heart, that is, that is shifting. And if that's you, please like, let me know, let them know. We would love to walk alongside you. There is no bigger honor than someone coming and sitting with me and going, hey, I'm really sorry, but I feel like we're supposed to leave because God is calling us someplace else. Like, here's, don't just leave. That's not a big honor. Don't just leave to go somewhere. Yeah. But if God is like, hey, calling you to missions, um, I can't wait to, to walk alongside people. And I believe that as kingdom builders, it's one of the things we talk to. We don't just give to kingdom builders. We are kingdom builders. And if God is calling you to build the kingdom in Thailand or anywhere else, um, I just want to echo that message. Yeah. So thank you. Pastor Brand, thank you also for saying you're sending your best because the pastor literally is like, hey, when you go back to America, send us their best. Seriously. <laughs> That's what they actually said to us. They said, send us our best. We need more people here. They even literally invited you. They've sent us to invite you. So thank you so much yeah. for saying that. Invitation. No problem. Can we give them a hand one more time? <clears throat> So, so awesome. I love uh, one of the other things that, that we do around here is you'll see them leave. Uh, that's because they're going to go hang out with your kids. 
So if you have kids in children's ministry, um, they're going to go talk with them for a little bit about missions because, again, we talk about this. We believe the next generation are also kingdom builders. Um, I believe that God can speak to them. Uh, I believe that, that God, at an early age, I feel like I was called to ministry at the age of 12. I know people that were called earlier than that. Uh, and it's, it's amazing for, for them. It's not like missions is this adult thing that we do in here. Um, missions is the heart of God. And as we're created in his image, it's, it's something that, that we, get to, we get to pursue uh, as we have a relationship with him. So uh, excited for what they're about to do. Um, and again, being a, being a kingdom builder, one of the things that we do do is we give. Again, thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, it impacts the world. <laughs> Again, they said it quickly. I don't know if anyone else caught it. They work at a university with 525,000 students. Did you catch that? Like, was a, they just kind of glossed over it. Um, but it's amazing what happens when, when we invest in the kingdom of God, how, that, how far that impact can go. And I just want to thank you so much for being generous. Um, this is a, a moment where Again, we, we talk about ways to give here. We believe that giving is worship. We believe that while we worship with our time and with our voices and with song, we also worship with our resources. Uh, there's a few ways that you can do that here at Weatherstone Church. If you're here in person, there's an offering envelope in the seat back in front of you. You can grab that and fill it out and, and, uh, so you can get credit for that. There's actually boxes in the back. You can drop that in on the way out. Or there's a few ways to do it securely online. You can text the number on the screens. Uh, and that will send you a link, and you can set up an account. If you already have an account, you can give online as well. Uh, it's a way to just have secure giving. We thank you so much. So much of our giving comes online, um, and I thank you for, for your faithfulness in that, of, of being faithful to the tithe, that first 10%, and then faithful above and beyond to be kingdom builders. Um, I just, it's, it's, it's so much fun. I can't wait to get to heaven and, and see what God did through us. Not just like buildings built or whatever else, that's, that's brick and mortar. But what it also is, is it's a place for restoration. It's a place for people uh, to hear. Uh, and as kingdom builders, we get to be a part of that. So thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, in giving. Today, as we move into this Christmas season, I don't know if you realize it or not, but it's December. Whether you like it or not, it's December. Uh, as you got on the road this morning, you realized it's December. Um, what's funny is I actually was preparing this message and I looked at the radar last night, okay? And in case you're wondering, there was nothing there, nothing at all. Um, and then I talked about what we're talking about today and, and the, the, the whole message over the course of this month is new. Like as I was praying about it, there's this, just the word new kept coming up and um, there's, there's a new life in the baby Jesus and there's a new covenant that happens. There's a new season that comes in and that's what we're going to talk about today, the new season. And I was like, yeah, like you get, you get ready because, you know, snow and fresh snow and even though we don't have it yet. And then, then we walked out of first service and I just want you to know I did. I got blamed for snow today. They we're like, you prayed this in. I was like, I promise I didn't. Um, but maybe that's how God wanted to show up today. See, he's real. There you go. If you were questioning, now you know. But this season uh, that, we're, uh, that we're going through is, is this just whole concept of new. I think what's fun about new and a new season is the anticipation of it. Like there's, there's a new anticipation that happens when, when a new season is coming. There's even a line in a song that gets me every time, the thrill of hope. Like I don't know why, I love that line. Like there's just, there's something about it. Like there's, there's a thrill of hope. It speaks to the anticipation of what's about to happen and what's about to come. And we're in that moment right now where there's anticipation. And we realize that, that this has been building since the beginning of time. If we back all the way up to creation, in Genesis chapter one, God creates the universe and he creates the world. And then in Genesis chapter two, we see, we see the Adam and Eve, and it's that, that moment of, it says he created them in his image, he created them male and female, and this is this perfect relationship that he has with his creation, the God of the universe, and with us created humans, and it's like, it's this awesome moment, but then if you know the story, you get to chapter three, and in chapter three, we ruin it, and sin enters the world, and in that moment after that, as as God then speaks to Adam and Eve and then to the serpent. He 
He starts talking about the consequences of sin. And there's consequences to the serpent, but then there's also this promise that God gives. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall crush your head, and you shall bruise his heel. There's this moment at the very beginning of time where there's a promise. And ever since that moment, as history has moved forward, there's an anticipation of this time where relationship is going to be restored, where, where it's, going to, it's going to be like we're going to have relationship and, and communication again with the God of the universe. And it's this anticipation where things are going to go back to the way that God intended, the perfection that was there. Now, anticipation is, is a fun word. I actually, in the course of the last week, have fallen in love with the word anticipation, right? Because I didn't, I, I don't know. I feel like anticipation to me was a little bit of an emotion, right? It was like, I don't know, like I feel something. Here's what anticipation actually is. Anticipation is a Latin word that's a compound word. It starts with anta, uh, which means before, and then the second word is capiri. I may not be saying that right, but that's what it is, all right? which actually means to take. So when you put them together and we get this word anticipation, what it actually means is to take action before something actually happens. It means to act in advance. And it's not about an emotional response. It's actually, it's, it's a literal response. It's, a, it's an action that we do. When we anticipate something, we, we prepare ourselves, we get ready before it happens so that we're ready when it happens. Like if we anticipate something, we move ourselves into position to be prepared and ready for what is, what is about to happen. Like even right now, right? Some of us anticipated today. That means we got all the shovels towards the front of the garage, right? Just this last weekend, I parked the lawnmower for good in its final resting place for the next few months. Started to move things around a little bit. Why? Because we anticipate it. We know, we know that it's coming. Now hear me. I just want you to know this, I don't, I'm not a fan of winter, okay? I don't like cold, but I do like seasons. Like there's a moment, the first snowfall, that's fun because it just looks new, right? It looks, it looks clean, it's, it's, it's all put together, like it just, it, it looks new. And I didn't even realize that I liked it uh, until I moved to Florida, so right after college, here's what happened. Right after college, uh, the first job that Amber and I had, we got married. And then in June, uh, we moved to South Florida. We we're in Fort Myers. And we get there, right? It's June, which whatever. Like, I didn't realize it was terrible in Florida in June, but it was new. So it was fine for me because it was new, right? So you get through that season, and then you get into the fall, and you get into the winter, which doesn't actually happen there. And you're like, this is great. I am never moving back to the north. Like, this is awesome. I'm like taking pictures and sending them back to people up here in Wisconsin. Like, this is great. I'm on the beach. You're shoveling, right? Like I said, taking pictures. Like we weren't really taking selfies because we didn't have phones like that. We had flip phones. You had to like turn it. Like, so I don't know if they could even tell it was me in the picture that you would send back with phones in 2005. It was like, here's a picture with both pixels that we had at the time. So that was what, what happened. So, but then we get there, okay? And, and, you get through that first season, and then you realize it's all the same. And I didn't think this would impact me the way that it did. Like, I was like, I am totally fine with summer all year round. But as we go through it, and we're there for, for more months, and we get to Christmas the second time, and all of a sudden I find myself with this attitude, and I'm like, you can't decorate a palm tree? Like, that is not Christmas. I realize it's been the same thing for the last, like, 18, 20 months that I've been there. It's literally... I'm sorry if I'm insulting you. If you're from Florida and you love it, that's great. Like, I'm glad that you do. Um, for me, like, it, there's only one season in Florida, and that's, well, two seasons. There's summer, and then there's hurricane season, which is summer you have to evacuate from. Like, that's the only thing that's there. And in this moment, I was like, you know what? I realized I'm way more of a Midwestern kid than I thought, because I need, I need to anticipate something. I want there to be change. I want there to be, to be a new season that's there. I, need, I want something to look forward to that's happening. And what we see in, in this moment in Scripture, when we talk about anticipation, when we look at a new season, there's this time where we start to, we start to look forward. 
with excitement for what's about to come. Because anticipation biblically isn't just that we look forward to like, I don't know, something's going to change. But there's a promise that says, hey, there's going to be a time where there's the, this, this offspring of Eve is going to come and he's going to crush your head. The power of sin is going to be gone. Yeah, you're going to bruise his heel, but it's going to be devastating blow to you. And in that, there's going to be a relationship that's restored. And from that moment on throughout history, there's been an anticipation of this season. And I started to look through these different times where where people would anticipate even in the Old Testament. Even before we get to prophecies of the coming Messiah, what it means for us as the church to anticipate a move of God. What does that really look like? I was reading in Exodus chapter 12, there's a part of, of chapter 12 that I think I missed. I feel like I've read it so many times. It's the story of the Passover, the very last plague um, as the Israelites are in captivity in Egypt and nine plagues have come and Pharaoh the entire time has been like, no, I don't care. Like, yes, I can obviously tell this is an act of God. I don't care. You can't leave. And finally, God says with the 10th one, here's what's going to happen. The firstborn of every household and all of the livestock of the Egyptians will be killed in one moment. But if you take a lamb, you sacrifice this lamb, and you, you put the blood of the lamb over your doorpost, the, 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 that the death angel will pass over your house. And we know this story, and, and we talk about it during communion, because that's kind of that's where we get communion from, is, is that Passover meal that, that Jesus was explaining to him. So we've, we've talked about the Passover. I know the Passover, but there was something that I missed in Exodus chapter 12 until this week when I started looking at how we position ourselves in anticipation. What Moses said is he instructed the Israelites, like, here's how you do it, and this is the meal that you're supposed to have, and this is how you cook the lamb, and you, you get everybody inside your household, and you're there. And then in verse 11, though, he says this, in this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened. All right, so here's the deal. Like, the belt is the last thing you put on in this culture. Because you've got kind of these flowing garments that are there, and what your belt does is your belt holds everything together so that you can actually move. Without it, you're going to get tripped in your dress and all that stuff. Everybody, I just call them a dress, I don't know, right? But like it brings everything together. He's like, no, 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 your belt fastened, okay? Which eliminates stretchy pants for a lot of these people, I feel like. It's, it's whatever. It's a holiday joke. You guys could have laughed at that one. It's fine, okay? It says, your sandals on your feet your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. You know, the very first Passover meal, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to go through all the rituals that are here, and we're going to take our time. It was like, hey, God's about to do something. Let's get ready. Like, it's, you're, you're in a position in an anticipation where you're like, all right, we're eating, but at any given moment, when we hear the signal and the sign, it's go time, because God's about to do something. What he tells him after this is he's like, here's the deal. You're going to start to hear wailing. And all of a sudden, the Egyptians are going to realize what happened, that that God actually did what he said he was going to do. And you're supposed to go knock on their door and say, hey, do you have any valuable possessions for our journey? And they're going to give you things, right? So, So you're going to have gold and silver and clothes that are there. And you've got to be ready to receive it. And then we're out. And there's this anticipation. Like, I feel like we need to take communion differently just once, just to see what this is like. Where it's not just this moment where we're slow in remembrance, but this Passover, the original Passover, is literally this moment of going, all right, we're eating it, but we are ready. Like we are, God is about to do something tonight, and we are ready. We're in a position and a posture to receive it, that when it happens, we're ready to go. It's time to run. It's time to get into the freedom that we have. This was how they got into their exodus, but we see in the book of Joshua how they got into the promised land after the exodus. The same thing happens in in Joshua chapter 3, in verse 5, Joshua tells the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I can only imagine that there were some sleepless nights that night. Can you imagine? You're like, man, what's going to happen tomorrow? Like, 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 if you think it's hard for your kids to go to sleep on Christmas Eve, like, can you imagine being the Israelites here going, man, God's going to do something incredible tomorrow. Get ready. Get yourself in a place. Consecrate. Cleanse yourself because tomorrow God's going to do something incredible. And there's this anticipation 
for, for each and every one of us. And I, I believe that that's for us as a church and as people today as well, that God is doing something new. That it's not that we just sit back and wait and then when he does, you're like, all right, I guess, I guess I'll prepare for that. But there's a part of faith that is actually preparing beforehand. There's a part of faith that says, hey, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to get my belt on. I'm going to get my sandals on, right? Like maybe Sorrells for those of us in this season, right? We're going we're to get ready and prepared because we're ready for what God has in store. And we lean into what he has. We lean into what is new. Because if you notice, there wasn't a whole bunch of moments where Joshua or Moses told them exactly what was going to happen. He just said, get ready. There's times in our lives where we don't know what it's going to be, but know this, when God says, I'm about to do something, know that it's going to be good. It's going to be better than where you're currently at. God's going to move you, but he's not going to move you just for fun. He's going to move you because he's got something for you. The question isn't, is he moving? The question is, are we ready? Are we ready to receive? Are we, are, are we ready to be able to, to, to grasp it and take hold and take advantage of that moment and opportunity when he's there because we've anticipated and we're ready for the new thing that's coming? We start to see prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah then that are going to tell us when this new season is happening, what we can anticipate. And in Isaiah chapter 7, we learn that the Messiah is going to be born of a virgin, it says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. It says there's going to be a moment where, where you're, this is going to be a sign to you that a virgin is going to start, this is going to be with child. And she's going to name this child Emmanuel. He's going to name this child God with us. Just like in the beginning of time, the way that it was supposed to be, we had relationship with God. We were one. We were with God. We walked in the garden together as his creation. There's going to be this moment where when you start to hear about a virgin birth and she names this child the name Emmanuel, start to understand that, that creation is coming back together. What we've anticipated, what we've looked for, what we've yearned for, where that relationship is starting to come. There's so many other prophecies. Micah chapter 5 talks about it being in the town of Bethlehem. It says in verse 2, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, it says, Who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, for you shall, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be the ruler in Israel whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. It's been prophesied about that person, the, the Messiah, the Savior, that has been prophesied about, he's going to come from you, from Bethlehem. So we start to see these things, and there's so many more of them throughout the Old Testament, where we start to see these, these prophecies, their messages, their, their, their hints, their, their clues, if you will. I don't like the word clue because it's not like it's a mystery. Like God was showing us what was coming and what was happening so that when we would anticipate and be ready. It's amazing is throughout the Old Testament when you look at Hebrew culture, there was these people would just study scriptures over and over again and, and look for when the Messiah would come. See what signs would start to be happening. And what we see is we jump into the book of Luke. And I love um, the detail that Luke gives us. Luke was a very detailed person, right? He was a doctor. He didn't miss much. And he gives us all of these accounts, not just of the birth of Jesus, but what happens before the birth of Jesus. That the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah, came to Elizabeth, who are the parents of, of John the Baptist, who then came to Mary and says, you're going to be great with child. And Mary, if you know the story in, in, in Luke chapter 1, is like, ah, that's not possible. And here's what happens, picking up in verse 35. The angel of the Lord answers, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be barren, is now in her sixth month, 
for nothing is impossible with God. Let's pause for a moment. Because I feel like sometimes when we get to this and we start thinking about the new thing, that sometimes we disqualify ourselves from what God wants to do in our lives. And there's two common ways that we do it. One common way is we try and be like Elizabeth, and one, try, one way is we see ourselves like Mary. Mary was like, ah, it's not my time yet. I can't do that. I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not to that point in life where I can bear a child. The other side of it is Elizabeth is going, I missed my shot. I had a chance. I know there's people that I've talked to that, that feel like they've missed their window or they've ruined their window of time because of what they've done or, or the life that they've had or lived or that's happened to them. What's amazing before this even happens, before the birth of Jesus, is we learn a valuable lesson about anticipating something new, is you have not missed your window and you don't have to wait for your window. But when God says, now is the time, it's time. And it doesn't matter our age or place in life, our job is to be anticipating, to be ready and expectant for God to do what only God can do. Because we might not be able to see it, like Mary. It was like, I don't know how this is going to work out. And the angel of the Lord had to say, nothing's impossible for God. It's not about what you can do. It's not about what you have done. It's about who your God is. And when you realize that and when you lean into a new season, you can receive through anticipation what God has in store for you. Continuing on, it says, I am, or Mary responds and says, I am the Lord's servant. She answered, may it be to me as you have said. Then the angel of the Lord left her. She's in this moment going, all right, I don't, I don't know what that means, but I'm in. Hear me, if, if today you're even looking at the new season and there's a little bit of fear, that's okay. Don't let fear rule you because faith overcomes fear. But it's all right. You even look at Mary, you look at her response where she's like, I don't know how this is going to happen. We know from scripture she has to have a couple of really tough conversations after this. Can you imagine how many people didn't believe you that you were like, no, I promise the angel of the Lord is the one and that's why I'm pregnant. Like, those are conversations that Mary had to have. It wasn't just free skating from then on out. But there was a level of faith and anticipation of going, all right, God, I'm in. I'm in. And it's that heart posture of leaning in and being expectant of what God has done. There's a fear sometimes of the unknown. I think that's more so what it is for a lot of us um, than anything else. Like I find myself praying this prayer where I'm like, God, do a new thing. But if I were honest with myself in that moment, really what I'm praying for is I'm like, God, do that new thing that was new last time that I really liked. Because I'm used to that. Like that's, let's, let's go with that one. But that's not the promise that God has for us. When God promises new, what we can be confident in is that it's better, that it's good, but it may be something that we haven't experienced before. And there's this, this, this fear of the unknown, but don't let the fear of the unknown block you from walking in and receiving the blessing that God has for you. What if we leaned in to the new with that same expectant of knowing who our God is? Our God's not going to lead us into something that's detrimental. He's not going to lead us into something that, that isn't beneficial for us. But there's a time and a moment where we say, all right, God, it doesn't even make sense to me. It's not all clear, but that's because it's new. And when we start to realize that different is actually new, if we call it new, I feel like that's more fun. Like, let's just start calling everything new. It's not different, it's new. Why? Because that's what God promised he promised to pour out a new thing, to do a new thing in our day and age. And we get to lean into the new and anticipate it. Continues on, Luke chapter 1, verse 39. It says, so in those days Mary arose and went with haste. I like that word, right? Eat it in haste. She went with haste. It was immediately like, all right, part of this, this is me trying to think like Mary, which is not easy to do, right? But if an angel of the Lord mentions another person that already knows what's about to happen. Like, that's the only person on the planet that's going to, like, understand. Who else do you tell in that moment, right? So she's like, all right, Elizabeth must get it. So she says she goes in haste 
It's into the hill country of the town of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now here's something that's really cool. There's something that is happening now where the atmosphere is starting to shift. Whereas in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon specific people at a specific time for a singular specific purpose. Now all of a sudden, when God with us, even in the womb, shows up in your house or shows up in the house of Elizabeth, there's this this Holy Spirit movement that's not there anymore. That it's not about making sure that you go to the right place and do the right things and go through the right motions to be able to be in the presence of God. Now all of a sudden, what's amazing about this, before even the birth of Jesus, what happens is Jesus, in his mom's womb, shows up in her house and fills her with the Holy Spirit. You know what? Grasp that for a moment. This was a spot where the presence of God was only supposed to be contained in one spot, the Holy of Holies. But when Emmanuel, God with us, shows up, hasn't even been born yet, but shows up in Zachariah's house, and Elizabeth is there, God is with her in that room in her house. It's a new normal that today, in your house, in your room, God can show up today, and a new normal can happen, and a shift can happen. It's not if it can happen, it's will we be ready when it does. Will we be ready to receive it? Will we be ready in that moment? Again, there's an angel of the Lord. Gabriel shows up, right? So Elizabeth knew what was coming. In the same way, when we're in the presence of God, do we anticipate and know so that we're ready when God shows up, that we're there? There's a prophecy in Isaiah chapter 43 that speaks to the Savior. It talks about the new thing. And there's a moment when we as, as followers, as the church, it's not that we are trying to find out if God is moving, it's are we ready? In Isaiah chapter 43, uh, if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to, to follow along because we're going to read 19 verses today. This is a powerful prophecy of the Messiah, the, the coming king that's, that's about to show up. And God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah here, but he's speaking to the people of Israel. He's speaking to these people who, they've been in captivity in Babylon. There's, 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 there's no hope, but yet there's hope because they're anticipating this Savior, this Redeemer, not just the one that's going to save them from captivity that's there, but to, to save them as the Messiah forever. And this, the word of the Lord comes to Isaiah. Read this with me in chapter 43. It says, but now... This is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name because you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom and Cush and Seba for your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. We pause like somebody, you just need to receive that today. Why does God do this? Because you're precious and honored in his sight. I don't know how you see yourself today, but this is how God sees you. He loves you. You are precious. You are honored. You may look at yourself and see failures. You may look at yourself and see what people have said about you or the shortcomings that you've had. You know how God sees you? He says, you're worth my ransom because I love you, because you're precious, because you're honored in my sight. He says, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Verse 5, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have blind eyes, who have ears but are deaf. 
All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of them foretold this and proclaimed it to the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right so that others may hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I, not some foreign gods among you. You are my witness, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from the ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Verse 14, with This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, he who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. He says this in verse 18, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. What hits me is that moment of going, do you not perceive it? I believe this is still a message for the church today, that there's a new thing coming. And I believe God is saying, do you not perceive it? Do you not not feel it? Do you not know that I am still working, that, that something is happening? There's a shifting that's going on. There's a new thing that's coming. It's different, but I promise it's gonna be good. It's gonna be salvation. It's gonna be purpose. It's gonna be walking into who God has created us to be. But there's a new thing. It's not, is it going to happen? It's, it's, are we going to be ready to receive it? Have we anticipated? Have we taken action before it happens so that we are ready to respond? Have we, have we put the belt on and put our sandals on? Have we consecrated ourselves to be ready for what God is going to do? I truly believe that God is continuing to move today. And the reason we aren't seeing it so often in the church in America isn't because he's not moving, it's because we're not ready for it. Have we prepared ourselves for what is new? One of the incredible messages of this season of Christmas is that God is still a God of his promises is that what God has, has said before and what is prophesied, he is faithful to, to redeem. When you look at the number of prophecies that Jesus fulfills in his birth, something he could not control, it's proof that God is God, that God is still moving, that God still cares and has something incredible for you. And when we, again, reflect on this story in this season, it's not just to feel good and to go through the emotions and have a candlelight service because we did it when we were kids. It's for us to once again remember and recalibrate our thinking to go, there's a new thing coming. There's a shift that's coming. Am I ready? In the same way that I anticipate gifts and lights and all the fun that's there and the cookies, am I anticipating something so much greater than that that is a move of God that's new and different? And have I prepared myself to receive it. What a better time than in a new season to have a new outlook and anticipation. Don't wait till the new year. There's a new season that's happening now. Let us prepare ourselves to receive and be ready for the shifting for what God has in store for us. So before we close, I just want to do this. I'm going to ask you just for a moment, just to bow your heads and close your eyes. I believe that in this moment that God can speak and is speaking directly to you. And there's times where in it all we have to pause and take inventory and say to ourselves, are are we ready for a new thing? Do we really even desire a new thing? Hear me, I know there's been times even in my own life that I'm like, I'm kind of comfortable 
I don't know that I want new. But it's in moments and seasons like this that, that we're reminded that the new that God has for us is the best thing that we can lean into. And before we even lean into that, there may be some people here in this room or even watching online that are listening today. And maybe you feel like Elizabeth. And maybe you feel like you've missed your window. Or maybe you feel like you've done too much. You've done something that, that doesn't allow you to be used or allow you to, to lean into the gift and the new that God has. Hear me today, nothing is impossible for God. So much of this story is proof that he is exactly who he says he is and he's a God who can still save today. Maybe you're on the other side of the spectrum. Maybe you just have never heard. Maybe this whole thing is new to you. Can I tell you there's no better decision than you can make than what Mary said and said, hey, I'm in. Even if it doesn't fully make sense, I'm in. Today in this place, you may be here and you say, you know what? I need to lean into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you have known and have walked away. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, but I believe today is the day where you can start new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says in verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. It says the old is gone and the new is here. It's just this moment of when you give your life over to Jesus, you become a new creation. The past is gone. The sin is gone. And you become who God created you to be. If that's you today and you're in this place, whether you're here, whether you're watching online, I just want to ask you to do this. If you're here and you say, I need a new relationship with Jesus. I need a fresh start. I need to commit my life to whatever he has in store. If that's you today and you want to start this relationship with Jesus or, or rekindle this relationship with Jesus, if you could just do this with nobody looking around, would you just lift up your hand so that I can see you and I can pray with you today? Thank you, I see you. Thank you. I see you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I see you. So good. I see you. I see you over here. It's so awesome. It's amazing as it says in the book of Romans that if you believe with your heart, and I believe as you raise your hand, that's because it's a response. I believe that you believe. That's your response to say, I believe who you are. I know that you're the son of God. I know who you are, Jesus. Even those of you watching online, even though I can't see you, God sees you. The book of Romans says, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lead you in a prayer today. One of the things that we do here at Weatherstone Church is, is nobody prays alone. We believe we're a family together, so we're all gonna say this. I'm gonna ask all of you to repeat after me, but for those of you that just raise your hand, know this is your moment to start a new thing to ask Jesus into your life. Would you all repeat after me and say, Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I know that I've fallen short. But today I believe that you came to this earth. You paid the price for my sins. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I promise to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, can we give God praise in this place? Come on, it's a new thing that's happening. There's a new shift that's happening. And I wanna do this, I wanna ask everybody to stand. If you would stand with me. Like I know that we end service with, with one song every week. And we don't do it just because we try and put a bow on a fun little service so that you can end. 
But this is our moment to respond. This is our moment to, to allow God to speak to us, to respond to him, to what he has been speaking to us. This is a moment where we get into a posture to receive. Again, I don't know where, where each and every one of you came from in the last year or weeks or day or even this morning. But I know this, when there's a shift in the atmosphere and there's a shift in our posture that we're ready to receive that God always shows up. This isn't just a cute little bow on the end. This is an opportunity for us to worship. Worship is a part of our posture. Do you know that? When we worship, when we have our hands raised, there's a moment of surrender, which is posture. There's also a moment of receiving, which is posture. When we anticipate blessing coming, when we anticipate newness coming, we're like, all right, we're in a position and a place. And when we get into a posture of worship, we're in a position to receive all that God has for us. It's a moment for us to respond. And I believe when we do, we step into a season, a new season where we anticipate, we move, we take action before we even see it because that's what faith does. So let's worship together, but let's worship in anticipation because God is about to do something in our midst.